Sometimes the real reason that we're not moving forward in life isn't because we're not capable or that God is holding something back from us, but because of our limiting beliefs that are leading our behavior instead of our faith in God. Simply put, our expectations of God can lead to our limitations. It is then that we don't experience certain things simply because we just don't think that God can do it. Now, I'm not glorifying our thoughts like if we think hard enough, we can manifest what we want. But what I am saying is if we place limits on what we believe that God can do or what he will do in our lives, we lose the boldness and confidence that we need to take hold of, the blessings that we prayed for God to give us because our belief leads to our behavior. Today, this morning, my husband was watching one of his live sports shows and they were interviewing a boxer. And as they were interviewing the boxer, you can see he kind of put his hand up like he needed to sneeze, but then he put it back down. Now, this is live TV, y'all. This is live TV. And so the interviewer is asking the boxer just different questions. He finished asking him the questions and the camera zooms in on the boxer because we're expecting him to answer the question. He then puts his hand up again and is like, excuse me. And you think, OK, he's about to sneeze, you know. <laughs> But instead, y'all, he lets out this like really audible belch, like he burps. <laughs> and it was just completely unexpected. My husband was laughing so hard about it. And I was like, you know, if I saw that, I would have laughed too. He was like, well, let me rewind it. Let me show it to you. I saw it. And we were just laughing so hard because sometimes when you expect one thing, we expected him to sneeze and instead he burped, but you get something else. It's funny. There's there's a humor in not seeing or experiencing what you would expect. Sometimes, however, receiving something that was unexpected or experiencing something that's unexpected isn't funny. Sometimes it's just frustrating. Like when you go to Bojangles or Popeye's or Church's Chicken and you ask for chicken and they tell you, oh, we ran out of chicken. Well, I came here expecting chicken because you're a chicken restaurant. That's what you are known for and you don't have it. So sometimes our missed expectations leave us frustrated, disappointed, unsatisfied, I would say. But then there are times where maybe we expected someone to uphold a commitment to us. Maybe we expected them to keep a promise because they said that they would and we trusted them and then they didn't and we're left in pain, we're left heartbroken. Missed expectations can really leave us in a place where we then wanna lower our expectations. Now, I would say that this is healthy. You want your expectations to match reality so that you're not left unsatisfied, so you're not left broken or frustrated. But sometimes lowering our expectations is not a good thing, especially when it comes to times where we lower our expectation about what God can do in our lives. See, I feel like it is healthy to manage our expectations because people change, situations change, seasons change, right? So we would want to then adjust, I would say, our expectations accordingly. But God doesn't change. So if we start to find ourselves lowering our expectations when it comes to God, it's not because he changed. It's probably most likely because we've in some way changed what we believe about who God is, what he can do, what he said he can do. If we have limiting beliefs that don't reflect and align with the capacity of what God can do in our lives, that will reflect our actions and that will reflect in the course of our lives. I've learned that when we place God in a box, we run the risk of limiting what he can do in our lives. When we think that something is impossible, we prevent God's possibility from coming 
into our situation. So we really need to sometimes sit back and check our expectations when it comes to our relationship with God. One question God's been asking me, what did you expect? What did you expect? Because if you expect the worst case scenario, you're not going to take a step of faith. <laughs> so our steps of faith often begin with the thoughts and beliefs in our mind. Do we have the faith to even first believe that we could walk on water before we actually step out on the boat? Because many times that is the first step. What is going on in your mind? What do you believe? What do you expect? This is something that God's really just been speaking to me a lot about lately. And so as I was studying my Bible, using my Life Bible Journal right here, I came across a scripture where I saw someone else struggling with expectations, struggling with expecting the best when it came to what God could do, even in their weakness, their frailty, their brokenness, areas of their life that they wouldn't say were strong points for them. And that's what I want to share with you all today. I'm going to be reading from John chapter 5 verses 2 through 9. And we're going to come across a man that also had some limiting beliefs because of his expectation and how God was able to really help him move beyond that. And I hope that it helps you move beyond any kind of expectations about God that you need to elevate or raise or adjust according to God's character. You want your expectations of God to actually match with his character. I'm going to be reading from John chapter 5 verses 2 through 9 that says, now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda, which has five roofed colonnades. In these lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am going, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, get up, take up your bed and walk. And at once the man was healed and he took up his bed and walked. So let me give you a little bit of background here. There is a man that is paralyzed. He's invalid. He has some sort of health issue where he cannot move. He needs help to be able to move. And so he does want to be healed because he's at this pool that is thought to heal people like him. Now, it was the pool of Bethesda, and it was thought that when this pool was stirred, and some of you will notice that verse 4 is missing from this text, because if you read your King James Version, it'll go even deeper to say that there's an angel that came to the pool that stirred the pool up. Now, there's some controversy around that particular verse as far as if it should or shouldn't be in the Bible or not. However, that's a whole nother video for another day. The main message that I want you to understand is this man believed that he needed to get to the pool in order to receive his healing. He believed that because he couldn't get to the pool, he wouldn't be able to be healed. And that in itself was his limiting belief because he felt like it had to be this or nothing else. So even when we see uh, Jesus asking the man, well, do you want to be healed? That was a yes or no question, right? That yes, I, I want to be healed or no, I, I kind of want to stay on my mat. You know, obviously <laughs> the answer is yes. But instead of the man just saying, yes, I want to be healed. 
He gives Jesus all these excuses. Well, I can't get to the pool. And by the time I get someone to help me get to the pool, someone else gets there before me because he had all these limiting beliefs. And he didn't know, if you read on, you'll you'll f- figure out that this man didn't really know who he was talking to. He didn't know he was talking to Jesus, the Messiah. He's just thinking at this point, probably he's talking to some other man that just may be curious about his situation. And he's like trying to explain himself. Well, wait a minute, I do want to be healed, but I just can't get to the pool. I wonder how many limiting beliefs we would give God <laughs> if he asked us what we wanted. Well, we said, well, I, I want peace, but I, I'm not married. Or I want financial stability, but my business isn't doing as well as I want it to. Or I, I want this job, but I don't have this education, right? So, I mean, it seems like a really obvious question to the man. Do you want to be healed? Well, of course. Then that's then the answer is yes. But instead, he gave all these excuses. And I wonder what excuses do we give God when he if he were to come to us and say, well, do you want this? Do you want that? Do you want that? What would we say? Well, we can't have it because X, Y and Z. And I'm not saying that we treat God like he's some sort of genie. And and just because we say we want something, he's going to give it to us. But what I am saying is, are you putting limits on God? Are you doubting what he could do? Are you doubting his ability? Because the man didn't get up until Jesus told him to. Why? Because he didn't believe that he could walk without getting in that pool. Here's what happens when we don't expect the best from God. One, we might not take steps of faith to experience his promise. What if the man didn't get up? What if he didn't believe Jesus? What if, but what if, I mean, he had some level of faith for this random guy to tell you to get up and then he got up, you know? He he had limiting beliefs, but when Jesus spoke to him, he got up. But what if Jesus is calling you to do something and you decide, well, no, because X, Y, and Z, and I can't because this, and I don't have this, and I didn't go here, and nobody knows me here. What experiences would you be missing out on? What promises of God would you be missing out on? The second reason why we do not need to lower our expectations when it comes to God is because when we do, we then carry the weight of worry and anxiety because then we think that it's up to us because then we think that we have to do it. And God is saying, nope, I can give you strength. But if we don't believe that, we're not going to tap into God and get that strength from him that he offers to his children to do what he's calling us to do. Stay tuned for a sneak peek at next week's video brought to you by our beloved women members who support our mission to empower women with the love and truth of Jesus Christ. Our members receive exclusive access to beloved women videos, Bible studies, printable study guides, and more. If you like beloved women, you will love being a beloved women member. Learn more and join today at belovedwomen.org. Now enjoy a preview of next week's video. The man didn't think that Jesus could do anything, so he gave him excuses. And when we're talking to God and we're giving him excuses about why something can't happen, is it because we don't believe that he can move in the area? Is it because we aren't really sure if he will? But God's not looking for our excuses. He's looking for our faith because he is fully sure that he can do whatever it is that we need to do, that he can work it out. Now, does that mean it's always going to work out in the way that we expect? No, it doesn't. But the Bible, does promise us that all things are working together for the good of those that love him. All things are working together for God's glory. I often like to say, if it ain't good, God's not done. 